Could you please tell me what you are going to be doing on behalf of the Fulbright program? Really looking forward to heading up the, uh, the, the Fulbright Foreign Scholarship Board because we're at this interesting inflection point in society. We've become much more networked technologically in every aspect except um, in government because uh, government has had restrictions on how uh, we communicate with people who served in government. They, you know, unless they release their, their contact information, we don't know where they are. And so now we're using technology, we're using the power of the Fulbright Association uh, to reach out to our alums and help them solve problems together. Instead of being individual ambassadors for the United States or for their discipline uh, to a particular country, now they can work together on global issues. And we've got a lot of them, you know, whether it has to do with energy and environment, whether it has to do with the refugee crisis, uh, whether it has to do with just the nature of changing liberal democracies in the world with new technology. And uh, you know, Fulbrighters have been at the cutting edge of every issue in society, uh, being able to mobilize them as a group to help address this and deal with some uncertainty is going to be critical. And we now hopefully will have the tools in the coming year to do that. What are ways that U.S. Fulbright alumni can engage together and build community and advocate on behalf of the Fulbright program? Current U.S. Fulbright alums have been underutilized in their ability to extend diplomacy after their Fulbright term has ended. Uh, in many cases, the people who live in communities in the United States uh, haven't traveled abroad, or maybe they've traveled to one or two countries and haven't visited the hundred, other 178. And so how do we get them to understand the richness and diversity of, of each one of these countries, rather than just sort of a cartoon caricature of them. Uh, one way to do it is to have the people who have actually experienced those countries, who live in their communities, who've been Fulbrighters, and really have depth of experience, uh, do it. And this way you're not getting, you know, um, uh, news sensationalist coverage which only focuses on conflicts or outrageous behavior in a country. You're not getting just kind of romanticized or fictionalized accounts and movies, you're getting the, the real understanding of that country. So I think having alums reaching out, organizing events, bringing in alums from other countries who now live in the U.S., um, and, and, and creating a better understanding of the U.S. in the world, um, and also the challenges the rest of the world faces that we've overcome, so that we hold on to those institutions that, that have given us strength. Uh, and that sometimes we take for granted. Would you say then that it's important for U.S. alumni to join their local chapter of the Fulbright Association and participate in those in events and reach out to future participants in the program? I think it's absolutely essential that, that Fulbright alums stay engaged with their local chapter, stay engaged with the association. Um, Fulbright isn't a one-year deal. It's a lifetime experience and it's an opportunity to continue to learn, grow, expand, and give back over the course of a lifetime. Uh, and, and the local chapters are really the best way to accomplish that. They can give you the resources, the skills, the network, um, and, and, a, and a, an opportunity for advocacy that no person is going to be able to develop on their own. So I, I, think it's, I think it's critical. Is the Fulbright program safe? Well, um, the Fulbright program is, is one of the strongest programs in the, uh, uh, in, in the world in terms of cultural exchanges. It's been around longer, it's been around for 70 years. It has survived administrations on both sides. Uh, even last year when there was an attempt to reduce some of the Fulbright funding in order to fund a different scholarship program in Africa, uh, you, you saw people mobilize to support Fulbright and that's I think a, a symbol of its strength. On the other hand, uh, the question of whether or not Fulbright is safe, um, I think every institution needs to prove its value over and over again, needs to continue to grow and demonstrate and convince a new set of decision makers um, of its value. So I don't take anything for granted and no matter how strong, and robust and justified Fulbright funding is, um, it, 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 we've got our work cut out for us to make sure that everyone understands that and it gets stronger in the future. How important is it for U.S. institutions of higher education to support the Fulbright Association and the advocacy work that they do? Uh, I, I think that most 
people who are in the Fulbright Alumni Association either have strong affiliations with their universities or have moved into an academic role uh, or have just stayed in touch with um, academia because they, they, they have that, that bent, even if they've gone into the private sector. Um, for them to, to lose those connections, to let those, those, those important connections wither, is a real loss both for the institution and for the individual. So I think it's critical that anyone who's been through the Fulbright Alumni Association maintain that connection. Uh, if you look at where I'm from, Silicon Valley, uh, what made Silicon Valley great was a combination of government, entrepreneurs, private capital, and extraordinary research institutions all coming together. And it was that mixture of these sectors working together that has propelled uh, the, the Silicon Valley to become a world leader in innovation. I think any place that you can make sure that academia is engaged with those other sectors, uh, you're going to have a much stronger, stronger community, stronger environment. And Fulbrighters have a unique ability to drive that process. What are some ways that U.S. Fulbright alumni can work to increase the diversity of the applicant pool? U.S. Fulbright alums can help increased diversity in a couple of ways. One is reaching out into their own communities because we already have a, a diverse uh, alumni pool. But um, moreover, reaching out into non-traditional schools, um, both starting out in high school, but reaching out into the community colleges and public universities. I used to chair the California State University Board. Um, over 60% of CSU students are first generation students. They didn't grow up in a in a family and often in a community that talked about Fulbright. You know, their parents never went to college. And so for them not only to understand the opportunities in college, but opportunities like Fulbright is going to require education. And that means, again, Fulbright Association alums getting out there and helping, uh, helping spread the word in non-traditional schools, um, so whether it's a community college or, or, or any four-year public uh, institution where you don't have a high percentage of Fulbrighters um, over over decades uh, where a tradition's already been built up we need to build new traditions. How important is the Fulbright program as a tool of smart diplomacy in the world? Uh, one of my professors in uh, the graduate school, Joe Nye, was the person who who coined the term uh, soft power. And soft power is, is power, but it's a different way of getting people to understand um, your interests, your values, and to align with them. And sometimes that comes from movies, sometimes that comes from books, sometimes that comes from music. Uh, it can come from a lot of different forms, but no form has proved to be more potent than the people-to-people -people element that Fulbright um, that represents and, and demonstrates and has led for 70 years. So the, the, the leadership of our best minds, people who have been reviewed not only for their, the, their, their insights, but also for how they move through the world, whether they care about others and whether they are curious about others and whether they know how to engage, um, they, they are the, they're, they're the lead diplomats for uh, the United States. So I, uh, I, I think it's essential that if we are going to try to have um, a, a stronger, better, smarter diplomacy in the world, Fulbright's got to be a big piece of that. Do you have any last words for U.S. Fulbright alumni about the importance of the program and supporting the program? Uh, I want to say thank you to all of the Fulbright alums who have not only served our country as Fulbright representatives and, 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 and continue to be shining examples of America in the careers that they have afterward, but by engaging in Fulbright Association, not, um, not forgetting what it was that they inherited from the Fulbright program that existed before them, um, and paying it forward to the next generation. So thank you.